Hey everyone, welcome to this video, long time no see, I've been sick but I'm much better now. So today we're gonna do cloth deformation and we're gonna be using one button from X Particles that says create cloth. And I think it's very easy, very easy to way to create cloth and we're just gonna convert them into alembic files which we then on to texture them with Redshift. I hope you don't mind if I'm gonna be coughing or spitting into a microphone because it's happening a lot in that tutorial and I try to cut it as much as I can. But um, I'm getting definitely better, it was the chesty COVID, it's gone now, though so I tested negative this morning. Woo! And if you want to follow along, just download from the Gamrod link the template with three free materials so you can follow along and texture with me. So yeah! Okay, so let's start by creating a sphere and onto that sphere I'm gonna put inside him tag XP Collider. Inside that sphere we're gonna bring Shift plus C and bring in XP Attractor. So that Attractor is inside our sphere, so it will attract objects around. And now we're gonna set that Attractor to force 20 and bring in our cloth. So you go to Insidium, X Particles, Dynamics, Cloth Effects, Create Cloth. I'll bring this up. Nice. But you see, it's not deforming really well. So we're just going to make it 40 by 40 segments. And once the reset, I'm just going to change the frames to 120 only. And it's already looking pretty good out of the box. That's why I like about the cloud deformer in X particles because it, it, it makes really good results straight away. Uh, now I'm going to bring in XP turbulence as well and change the strength to 50. Now I can go to cloth deformer that's been created for me below the plane. We go to plane, it's below the plane. So X, uh, XP Cloud Deformer, and we can dampen the, the fabric by like 12%, just so it's not gonna go over itself and, and crazy folding. So something like that, maybe even like seven. Yep, that's good. Now, if I'm gonna put it all in subdivision, not the Cloud Deformer, the plane. So holding Alt and while well, plane selected, so put it into subdivision see that it's 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 looking nice and detailed and what i can do is to just go here uh, just stop it and go into plane itself we've done it many times bake is alembic so i select the folder i use xpk which is my dumping ground now i have that alembic here and alembic is file it's, it's just like a it's like a, how would i explain it it's like a video. No, 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 no. So the Alamic file is an open computer graphics interchange framework that distills complex animated scenes into non-procedural application independent set of baking geometric results. <gasps> uh, whatever that means. No, it's basically you are baking the simulation, you know, set of geometric values that will always stay the same and you can manipulate further in Alambics, make it slow more or so. That's why I meant it's by video. It's basically, it's going to set of constants. Cool. Whatever, whatever that is. Baking, it's baking. Woo! So now I have one Alembic here on the side. Um, and I still have my original plane. So what I can do, I can change the... I can resize to like, uh, I don't know, 150 to 600. It doesn't want to do it. So we've got this one, number one. And I'm just going to create... I'm just going to deselect everything and create a new one. And again... This time I'm going to go, and now I'm going to create a new one and I'm just going to go plain. Just going to work my own. Wow, this one's nice. It's like a scarf. Now I'm just going to, well, selected this new plane. I'm just going to convert it. And now when I press play, it will just behave the same way. So I liked it. So I'm just going to bake as Alembic again. Okay. A minute or not. <coughs> wow. And now I have another one. So I'm just going to put it into clothes with cloth one, scarf one. We can make like a disc. Everything else being created like a cloth modifier, attractor, emitter, constraints. But only thing it needs to create next is emitter. So each object needs its own emitter because the emitter is set, set to object, emitter shape, and then it uses that disc um, to, sh to shoot the, the emission shot, which has zero speed. So it's basically, um, if I would, uh, 
So on each of our vertices, basically there's particles and they have zero speed, but they react to attractors, gravity, turbulence. So I don't know why I have to explain everything today. It's just like, what? Okay, so I'm just gonna bake it as alembic again. I'm not gonna go crazy, bake as alembic. I'm gonna do one more. <clears throat> And that's going to be asked because I'm going to show you um, normally if you do uh, any class simulation, it, it can be pretty taxing on your computer. But because we're baking it as Alembic, we can have pretty much unlimited amount. I mean, not unlimited, but we can have a lot. And that's pretty cool because then you can create very complex scene with a lot of fabrics um, uh, around. Uh, and so I'm just going to move this one aside and maybe rotate it. Ooh, like this. I have a three alembics already created. I'm just gonna do one more. Let's just come up with something else. Uh... So now I'm just gonna do a little cleanup and delete everything else apart from our alembics. It's pretty fast. I can bring in some background. And because they are alembics, I can just grab them like this. I can scale them to my scene like nothing, right? But that's not everything. I can just highlight those four Alembics and I can say, hey, make it slow motion, 20% speed. Ooh, and we are getting in somewhere. So that's just nice. I can say, but yeah, it's taking too long. So minus 50 offset. <clears throat> and now it will play instantly. So you can see if I put it to zero, it's already deformed. So if you put to zero, it, it's not deformed at all. It starts from scratch and Alembic saves all the frames <coughs> of that animation and then plays it. So it's 120 frames of that saved animation we, we just did from a cloud deformer. And I'm going to say start from the frame 50 and it will start earlier. And so the, by the frame zero, it will be already on the frame 50. So that's what the offset does and and because it's really fast uh, we can you know do stuff like uh, okay highlight a sphere and maybe copy that uh, make it smaller so now it's just simply a matter of uh, cleaning up organizing the scene adding light so we can create our material okay so I brought all the textures in and now we're just gonna have a look what we have here so we have our base color probably gonna need that ambient occlusion roughness we have the height and normal and metallic opacity so just organize it like that cool <clears throat> now Normally we would go up with our base color into our redshift material and we would go into diffuse color, but because we have ambient occlusion here too, uh, the way it's uh, usually done, it's mixed in color layer. Color layer. So you put the base color into base color and then ambient occlusion into layer color one and then you can put it as a multiply and then you pipe it into diffuse color so you have a first thing first and i'm gonna now plug in our roughness so into redshift material and we go to reflection roughness so this is make it rough and now we can plug in our metallic. It's going to go rich with material and uh, reflection metalness. And now this is another thing. We have a height map and we have a normal map. So in our height map, we, we can um, bring in bump. and copy that twice. So hold control and drag it over and height map into bump map as a texture input. So that's a bump. And as you can see, height input map time is a height field, right? But this one is normal. 
So if we plug this one in and we go texture input, uh, and here we need to change it to one of those two. So tangent space normal. And this way we have a normal going into normal input type and then height going into height input type, which is correct. And now we're going to take bump blender and we're going to plug it into bump input zero and a bump uh, input one. And now we just simply, let's say if we go 50, 50, kind of blend them together. And then all this will pipe it into bump input. Now we create just kind of nice. Yep. We are getting there. Now opacity, we're just going to drag it and drag it to overall opacity color. And we've created nice fabric so we can change um, our color space on our base color so we can change it to Okay, so we have sRGB, this uh, roughness uh, that should be uh, as a raw and a height map definitely as a raw and a normal map as a raw too. This height and normal, height, normal, raw. Okay, I guess uh, we now go to scalar. So we go to math notes, scalar apps, so me absolute and just plug it into all our textures. Great. Now I can just make it scale of four, scale of six maybe. We have beautiful fabric now already. So if I zoom in now, <clears throat> you can see we've achieved really nice fabric level of detail. So you can really play with it. There's two more materials like that. So <clears throat> I hope you can find use for it. Uh, these uh, were made in Substance Painter, which I just installed recently. And I hope you can use that. So if you want to just kind of quickly, you know, duplicate that material and open it up and you can bring in C4D shader and just plug that inside the base color. So it's a texture. And then you change shader to color and maybe make it, I can go actually into, into one of our palettes and we can make the whole palette. So I'm just gonna load palette. Hopefully it's not gonna take same as, same as before. And yeah, it's taking that long. Mm. Oh. Okay, drinking. <laughs> We're gonna go with the lighter shade and apply it to our ball. That's really cool. And then copy that over again. And now red one, apply to our ring, copy that over, holding control, copy that over, and <coughs> maybe this one, apply to scarf. What we can do next, we can take one of those, um, or we can actually highlight them all, we can rotate them, uh, we can rotate them like that. Okay, and now uh, I'm just gonna go to my camera and say, hey, focus distance is this scarf. And then go into Redshift camera, Bokeh, override, enabled, and just do focus distance and increase the power. We can do focus distance on, on this actual ring. So I think there was plenty of for today. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at this moment. And thank you very much for watching again. Uh, whoever is watching and supporting my channel, there's been a lot of subscription. I mean, it slowed down already, but um, I guess I need to get back to it. Hmm.